I'm Madison Connaughton, and welcome to Mosaic Church in the Nazarene. Today, Pastor Rex will be sharing with us from the Word of God titled, The Real Thing. But first, please join us in some praise and worship to glorify the Lord. Yeah!
The big idea of our message this morning is, is it possible to experience the real thing? Question mark. The real thing is the title of our message today. 
We will take this from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1, all the way to verse 18. So maybe the question that will come to your mind is, Pastor Rex, what is the real fame? And we will try to answer that in our message today. Verse 1, the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. The writer of Hebrews illustrated the real thing by using a shadow. I got one right there because of that light. A shadow. The shadow is not the real thing. This is the real thing. That is not the real thing. Okay? Just for illustration's sake, just for illustration to illustrate what I'm trying to say, Pastor Rex went to buy a Jeep Cherokee in the dealership. The car salesman took Pastor Rex to the parking lot to show some really nice Jeep Cherokee. The salesman said, here is a really nice Jeep Cherokee. And there is its shadow. You can drive away with the shadow of the Jeep Cherokee anytime you want. In verse 1, the shadow points to the good things that are coming. The shadow points to the real thing. The shadow is not the realities themselves. So maybe, maybe the car salesman knows that Pastor Rex does not have the money to buy a Jeep Cherokee. A 2025 base model, the very base model, will cost about 40000 A four-wheel drive train trim will cost about 64000 according to Siri. Hi, Siri. For this reason, Pastor Rex cannot drive home a real Jeep Cherokee, not unless, guess it, it is a shadow. Uh, okay. That's exactly what the writer of Hebrews said about animal sacrifices. For this reason, it can never, it can never, the shadow can never, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. So an animal sacrifice is but a shadow of the sacrifice Jesus did on the cross. And the answer is, Jesus' sacrifice is the real thing. Verse 2. Otherwise, would they not have stopped being offered? For the worshipers would have been cleansed once for all and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. If the animal sacrifices are effective to cleanse the worshipers, they have been stopped being offered, right? If the shadow is okay with you, you can drive home a gypsy, you're okay. But no, it's not okay with you. Maybe with a shadow of the key. What is the goal of sacrifices? The worshipers would no longer have felt guilty for their sins, according to our verse. That's the goal. The goal was not met in offering animal sacrifices. The animal sacrifices have to be repeated year after year. Only the real thing could satisfy the goal. Jesus' sacrifice is the real thing. Verse 3. But those sacrifices are annual reminder of sins. They don't only remind the worshipers about their guilt, but... It is an annual reminder of what they did, of the sins they did. So this refers to the Day of Atonement. 
This happens once a year. Every time the high priest offered the animal sacrifices, it reminds them of their guilt. And it's a sad story. The real thing for the forgiveness of sins is found only in that great sacrifice made by Jesus on the cross. It's not the shadow of the cross. It is the real cross. He just did it one time, but the result is a clear conscience on the part of the worshipers. And again, the answer is, Jesus' sacrifice is the real thing. Verse 4. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. So during the Day of Atonement, only blood of bulls and goats were offered. It is impossible for the blood of these animals to cleanse the sinner from uncleanness brought by sin. Our verse said, it is impossible. It is impossible. Even today, if you try to do your salvation through your works, you cannot pay for it. You cannot work for it. You cannot do anything. What you are doing is just a shadow because those are not the real thing. An animal cannot possibly be a complete sufficient substitute for a human being who is made in the image of God. And the answer is, Jesus' sacrifice is the real thing. Verse 5. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. What is there for? This verse is from Psalm chapter 40, verse 6 to 8. It expresses the obedient submission of Jesus to the will of the Heavenly Father in coming to the world. Jesus came in a human body that God himself prepared for him. Jesus coming into the world made a better sacrifice, not a shadow. The Mosaic sacrifices, like the Ten Commandments, are replaced by a submissive obedience to the will of God by Jesus. It is more important to obey as compared or opposed to animal sacrifices. It is the desire to do the will of God. And the answer again is, Jesus' sacrifice is the real thing. Verse 6. With, with burnt offerings and sin offerings, you were not pleased. God the Father does not require burnt offerings and sin offerings. What does this mean? God finds no pleasure in accepting burnt offerings and sin offerings. He is more pleased in obedience. Remember that the author of Hebrews was talking to Jewish believers who were faithful while they were members of the Judaism in sacrificing burnt offerings and sin offerings. He was telling them the real thing had finally come. You don't need those sacrifices anymore, those offerings anymore. They just have to obey him. Just obey Jesus Christ. And the real thing is Jesus' sacrifice is the real thing. Verse 7. Then I said, here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. This verse was quoted from Psalm chapter 40, verse 7. Jesus came as the fulfillment of the prophecy. The purpose of his coming is to do the will of the heavenly father. What was it that the heavenly father is asking from Jesus, from his son, that God's son is to be the real sacrifice to atone for the sins of the worshipers. Everywhere in the Bible, the death of Jesus on the cross is by the will of God. 
There is no other way of salvation except through Him. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one goes to the Heavenly Father except through Him. We saw this obedience to the will of the Heavenly Father as Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but your will be done. And Jesus' sacrifice is the real thing. Verse 8. First, he said, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings, you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them, though they were offered in accordance with the law. None of the sacrifices and offerings is acceptable and pleasing to God. But wait a minute. If we will go back to the Old Testament, is it not that God himself prescribed the sacrifices and offerings? Right? God himself prescribed these offerings that the people should give. Ah, you are nodding your head. You agree. Yes, it is, right? God did prescribe those. But God is also replacing those old to something new. We don't need those sacrifices anymore. He's replacing them. Ah, praise the Lord. I don't have to go buy a bull or a goat. Woohoo, yeah. <laughs> the giving of sacrifices and offerings is no longer effective because it is not coming from the heart of the giver. It became a ritual that has no meaning to the worshipers. There was no inner chains at all. They just go, offer, I did my part. <laughs> Next year again. Wow. Jesus replaced the old with the new. Jesus' sacrifice is the real thing. Verse 9. Then he said, Here I am, I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. He sets aside the first to establish the second. His perfect sacrifice offered in complete submission to God's will far exceeds the first covenant and therefore replaces all the previous sacrifices as the means by which sinners are made holy or perfect. The real sacrifice has come. It's no longer the shadow. The old is the shadow. Now the real thing has come. He is Jesus. He came to do the will of the Heavenly Father. And the answer again is, Jesus' sacrifice is the real thing. Verse 10. And by that will... We have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So it is through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all that we have been made holy. Ah, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Jesus Christ did it once for all. We don't need to repeat it or he doesn't need to repeat it. That is in contrast to the sacrifices made year after year by the temple priest. But it does nothing to the worshipers. There is one other thing. Jesus did it through his own body and not through the bodies of animals. Jesus did it once and will never do it again. His sacrifice satisfied the anger or the wrath of God. He offered grace. God offered grace for by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God so that no one can boast. <laughs> I cannot boast because he did it for me. You see, the answer is Jesus' sacrifice is the real thing. Verse 11 and 12. Day after day, every priest 
stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Verse 12, but when this priest, this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. The priest in the Old Covenant stands and performs his duties day after day, but were never enough to take away sins. But Jesus offered himself once as a sacrifice, and after that, he sat down. After you've been standing the whole day at work, walking here and there, inside the big, huge warehouse or inside the big, huge department store. At the end of the day, you want to go to your recliner and sat down. Jesus did. He did his work, and then he sat down. He offered himself once as a sacrifice, and after that, he sat down. And he said, it is finished. It is finished, as Jesus mentioned on the cross. So the duties of the priest never ends and they keep standing. Jesus did it once and sat down because what he did was sufficient. Jesus' sacrifice is the real thing. Verse 13. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. Psalm 110 verse 1 says, and I will quote Psalm 110 verse 1, the Lord says to my Lord, the first Lord there is in capital letters, and then the second Lord is in small letter. It says, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool to your feet. It's a prophecy of the coming of Jesus Christ. So Jesus, having finished his part in the salvation of humanity, is now relaxing and calmly waiting until the end of time when his enemies are footstool under his feet. Because a recliner, my recliner at home, you go like this in order for you to prop up. But those other recliners that go, maybe next time I will have one of those. Or some of you will have a couch and then you will pull the, the, the footstool, right? And put your feet up and relax, kick your shoes. Ah, it's relaxing. And Jesus did. And he was waiting, he is waiting for the end to come to make his enemies a footstool for his feet. Well, meaning Satan will be completely defeated at that day. And Satan would be a footstool for Jesus Christ. Satan doesn't like to hear that at all. This is an illustration using the tradition of kings putting their feet on the necks of their enemies, symbolizing their enemies as helpless and weak and defeated. Why? The victory has been won. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus did it. Jesus' sacrifice is the real thing. Verse 14 by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. So Jesus came and sacrificed himself, and it was sufficient for the sins of the world. It is by one person and one action. The words perfect and holy in that verse is just like play of words. It is just like saying, a perfect sacrifice made perfect worshipers, or a holy sacrifice made holy worshipers. It is a repeated idea in that verse. 
This means, or this verse means, that the sacrifice was complete and did not need to be repeated. Compared to the blood of bulls and goats, I know you memorized this already after several uh, weeks of studying the book of Hebrews. They need to be repeated every year. Jesus' sacrifice is the real thing. Verses 15 and 16. I'm smiling now because the good things are coming yet. Verse 15. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First he says, verse 16. This is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts. I like that one. That's why I'm smiling. He will put the, his laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. In verse 15, the Holy Spirit is the witness that everything is true. In another passage of scripture, it says the Holy Spirit is the down payment for our salvation. He is right there witnessing for our salvation. Oh, did you see the Trinity in that verse? The Holy Spirit witnessing God the Father's will and then the Son acting on our salvation. So there you go. The Holy, the, the Holy Trinity are work, all working together for our salvation. So the new covenant is summarized in verse 16. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them in their minds. This was quoted from Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33. So it's not something new to the hearers of the book of Hebrews. They have heard it before when Jeremiah chapter 31 was read. And Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33 said, This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time declares the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. That is the one that's added in there from Jeremiah. The plan of God is to put his laws internally inside of you as believers and not externally on those who will worship him. That is a very big difference. He will put it inside, in your heart and in your minds, not something that you do for him. Something that you do for him is just a shadow. The one that's in you is the real thing. Jesus Christ, that's why we said, accept him as your personal savior and Lord. God will not only write his law on a stone tablet, like the Ten Commandments, he will put it on their minds and hearts, the very center of a person. The hearts and minds will govern their lives. That is the effect of the new covenant that we have with Jesus Christ. Because the answer is, Jesus' sacrifice is the real thing. Verse 17, then he adds, their sins and lawless acts, I will remember again. No more. Ha! That's a per perfect right there. Their sins and lawless acts, I will remember no more. See, in this verse, verse 17, the new covenant guarantees that sins will be completely forgiven and God will Remember it no more. So the result of forgiveness is in verse 18. Let's read verse 18. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. You don't need it anymore. The shadow, you don't need the shadow. You just need the real thing. There is no additional sacrifice for sins are needed. To illustrate verse 17 and 18, this is how I will illustrate these verses. There is no need to pay again a debt that has been already paid once. 
You have paid your house, you don't have to pay for, pay for it again. You have paid your car, you don't need to pay for your car again. It has been paid. Not unless you get another gift here, okay? <laughs> or maybe a Indian motorbike. <laughs> I'm sorry, not a Harley Davidson. <laughs> Wow, it has been paid. You don't have to pay it again. Jesus already paid it all. Sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus, sin would completely be forgiven. His death on the cross is sufficient. It is sufficient. And when a person will respond in faith in that sacrifice, sin would Will, uh, would absolutely be forgiven. Why? The answer is, Jesus' sacrifice is, thank you, the real thing. Have you experienced the real thing? Have you? Maybe someday I can drive home a real Jeep Cherokee. And it must be brown in color, not any other color. It must be brown, pastor's favorite color, and any shade of brown, <laughs> from chocolate brown to a brown that's nearly orange. It's okay with me. Right now, right now, experience Jesus, okay? Experience Jesus. His sacrifice on the cross is the real thing. Pastor X, and thank you everyone for tuning in to our Sunday morning service. If you have been blessed by today's message and you're watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and click the bell to be notified of our future videos. Please join us at our next service. We welcome you and your entire family. You can find us straight across from Skateland here on Door Highway. It's Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. Pray the Lord may bless you so that you'll become a blessing to others. <laughs>